In this paper, we propose a learning-based approach to produce high dynamic range videos. Our system takes a sequence with alternating exposures as the input and produces a high-quality HDR video using two sequential CNNs. We begin by comparing our flow network against FlowNet and SpyNet for generating HDR videos. FlowNet is not designed for this application and therefore produces results with wobbliness. On the other hand, our flow network is able to properly align the frames and produces a high quality video. Similarly, SpyNet is not able to properly register the bricks and produces results with wobbliness. We also evaluate the effect of tone perturbation during training. Without this process, our system performs poorly on real world scenes. As seen, tone perturbation significantly improves our results on real scenes. Throughout this video, we compare our approach against Kalantari et al. and Kang et al.'s methods on a variety of scenes. We also compare against the methods by Mangiot and Gibson and Lee et al. on a few scenes. The results of Mangiot and Gibson's approach were provided by the authors, while for Lee et al., we use their source code. We start by showing scenes with two exposures separated by three stops. The optical flow-based method of Kang et al. produces results with visible artifacts. Note that the videos are slowed down to highlight the differences. Kalantari et al.'s result contains ghosting artifacts on the lady's face and body. Note that our method is significantly faster than theirs. While our method is able to properly handle this challenging scene, Kang et al.'s result has severe artifacts on the fast-moving hands. Kalantari et al.'s result suffers from ghosting artifacts on the lady's dress, hair, and hands. Next, we examine a scene with three exposures separated by two stops. As seen, our approach produces a high-quality result. On the other hand, because of the artifacts on the fishing rod, Kang et al.'s video has unnatural motion. Similarly, Kalantari et al.'s method is not able to properly reconstruct the fishing rod with thin structure and produces a result with unnatural motion. Moreover, their result contains wobbly motion in the background, as indicated by the red arrow. Meanwhile, our approach produces a high-quality HDR video. We also demonstrate comparison on several scenes from Kalantari et al. We start by showing our results for the ninja scene. Kang et al.'s method has difficulty reconstructing the fast-moving person. Similarly, Kalantari et al.'s approach produces visible ghosting and blaring artifacts on the arms and genes of the moving person. Note that our method is roughly 90 times faster than their approach. This scene contains a fast-moving skateboarder in the shades and a lady walking in the bright background areas. Our method is able to handle the motion in the scene and produce a high-quality HDR video. However, Kang et al.'s method produces a result with tearing artifacts on the skateboarder since optical flow fails to properly align the areas with fast motion. Kalantari et al.'s result contains ghosting artifacts on the lady, resulting in unnatural motion. Moreover, 
Their result contains severe ghosting artifacts on the fast-moving skateboarder. Next, we compare against the approaches by Mangiot and Gibson and Lietal on two scenes. Because of using a block-based motion estimation approach, Mangiot and Gibson's method introduces blocking artifacts around the fire. Moreover, they are not able to properly handle the significant noise in this case and produce results with flickering on the wall. Similarly, the result of Lee et al.'s approach contains flickering on the wall and discoloration on the fire. Here, because of significant motion, Mangiot and Gibson's method produces blocking and blaring artifacts on the towel. Moreover, this approach generates results with wobbliness in the background. Lietal's results has significant flickering on this challenging scene. Finally, we examine scenes with three exposures by first demonstrating our results. The result of Kang et al.'s method contains artifacts on the lady's arm. On the other hand, Kalantari et al.'s result contains wobbly and unnatural motion on the lady's hair. Our method produces a high quality result on this challenging scene. Meanwhile, Kang et al.'s approach is not able to handle the fast moving arms and towel. On the other hand, Kalantari et al.'s result contains ghosting artifacts on the lady's shoulder and unnatural and wobbly motion on the flowers. We also compare our approach against burst denoising, where all the frames are captured with the same short exposure. Because of significant noise in the input sequence, VBM40 is not able to produce a high quality video, while our method is able to draw information from the frames with high exposure and produces a high quality HDR video. Our method has some limitations. Here, because of significant parallax, we are not able to register the background and produce ghosting artifacts. However, our results are comparable to other approaches. The lady's hand in this scene is occluded and has significant motion. Therefore, our approach, similar to the other methods, is not able to properly reconstruct the missing highlights. Moreover, in rare cases, our approach produces slight discoloration which results in flickering. Furthermore, in regions where alignment fails, our method relies on the reference image and produces slightly noisier results. However, our result is still better than other methods. Note the wobbliness on the face in Kalantari et al.'s result, as well as the artifacts on the hands. Our method is fast, robust, and able to handle a wide range of challenging scenes as shown here.